the Irish rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. Yeah, Monday Night Rugby plus one because of the bank holiday. We're giving you Monday Night Rugby on a Tuesday. We're taking a look back on the URC quarterfinals from the weekend just gone by, including a pretty comprehensive win for Ulster against Munster. 32 points to 17, bringing the curtain down on the Johan van Gran era in Munster with a real whimper with the way that they played in that game at Raven Hill. It ends their season, which will be a big disappointment after the promise in the game against Toulouse, but the way that they finished it out, uh, going out very limply in the quarterfinals. It will be South African against Irish clashes in the semi-finals this weekend. We'll be looking forward to Leinster and Ulster's chances in those two clashes on Friday and Saturday as well. Delighted to say that we have former Ireland captain Keith Wood with us. Keith, how are you getting on? I'm good, Will. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to break down last weekend. I mean, we'll talk about the Leinster game, which was incredibly comprehensive against Glasgow, kind of blowing away any disappointment that was seven days before in the game against La Rochelle and Marseille in the European final. But Munster had a bit of time to dust themselves down after that loss against Leinster in the last round of the normal series. Their record in the five years under Johan van Graan, we mentioned earlier in the news round, was very poor. They played 14 knockout games in Europe and in the domestic competitions, won four out of the 14. Like for Munster, that's not good enough, really. No, and I think maybe sometimes that's part of the problem. Um, Munster aren't entitled to win them either. They have to actually go out and do it. And um, But when you look back in it for the, the period of time, it's... Uh, in terms of progression of a team, of a style, and, and what they've been trying to do, that hasn't that hasn't been very evident. And um, look, I, I think if you go back and look at the Toulouse game, and you see that full reconnection that Munster got with the crowd, and I know they lost the game, um, and I know I've heard them say that they drew the game, but they lost the game. Um, uh, that's ultimately um, Toulouse moved on to the next round. So. Um, but the manner in which they played was um, was fantastic. It's it's it is, I think, the manner in which Monster supporters have followed for a huge amount of time. It is for that chance and opportunity where they played against a stellar team and um, were were in it all the way to the very very end. And uh, for me, it felt like the start of a journey. And so there were so many. Um, not boxes ticked because that's a fairly odious phrase, but there were so many things done well, done right on that day that you hoped that they would drive on from there. And then for the last two matches, um, Munster just have been like so far off the mark. Um, attitude um, hasn't seemed to be right. Um, um, the, you know, inaccuracies uh, all over the field um, and incredibly poor, you know, I don't know whether it's down down to leadership, um, but they, you know, they just didn't perform at all, and and that's the bit that's disheartening for the for the fans is that um, it isn't about the times past, it isn't about the teams past, it isn't about what happened 10, 12, 14, 15 years ago. So what happened two or three weeks ago when they played against Toulouse, that that was a standard that should be the the calling card for Munster. And they're able to do that and they need to be able to get back to it. How much of that then comes down to motivation within the group itself as opposed to tactics? Because as you mentioned, they're very much on it. Like if you can't motivate yourself to be up for a quarter final at the Aviva Stadium against the reigning European champions, you may as well not be playing professional rugby. They were really on it that day, played very, very well against Toulouse and then have put in two very limp performances after that. Like you can say that they know that Johan van Graan and his coaching team are going out the door. They know that Roundtree is already in place for next season. Maybe the motivation isn't there because the summer is around the corner. But still as players, surely they should be able to motivate themselves for two big games to at least have a shot at the URC. Yeah, I think it's it's easy just to um, look. I think the players have to take responsibility for their own performance, but I also think it becomes very difficult. Um, it's almost like a, a lame duck coach in some respects. Um, when when Van Gran announced he was going six months ago, I, I was on this show. I said he either changes the style we play, and you know that monster play much improved or or maybe it is time for him to go at that stage. I'd still stand behind that comment. I do think Munster tried to change that because of anything I said, but mm. obviously they were trying to change. But when you look back in it for five years, you'd say, well, you'd like to have seen that change three or four years ago. Um, so that when you'd get to this pressure part of the season, that you those skills would be more bedded in. So 
Um, there has been uh, a change in style. There has been uh, elements where Munster have played very well. Um, but under under pressure, under fatigue, under emotional, um, the height and then the low that happens after losing, and we actually saw it with Ulster when they lost it to Toulouse, they were very, very poor the following week against Munster. But it just seemed... It, it, you you called it at the start and went out with a whimper and it's a very disappointing end to the season it's an end of a monster career for some coaches um, it's been an end of a career for some of the players that we've had in some class players that we've had in as well and now it goes on to um, how Graham Rountree is going to deal with all of this and I look I look at it very differently there's a there's a couple of things that are, that are needed there needs to be big leadership within the team within the team management there also needs to be more leadership within Munster itself um, um, they need to drive an awful lot more and be responsible for for some of the decisions that are being made and um, that's pretty much where Munster sits at the moment and look I'd be looking at this and saying what are they going to do now they're going to have a pre-season uh, they'll have a bit of time off some of the guys will go and play in Ireland uh, on tour then you'll have a pre-season um, it's about gelling as much as you possibly can and trying to have and build a sort of coherent monster way of playing because I don't know that it has been for the last while. So that's what we're that's what we have to look forward to. And we always live in hope, and that's yeah. that's part of it. How big is the rebuild, Keith? When you consider like that's a world class player gone in Dale Land Day. Obviously the coaching team is pretty much entirely swept away with the exception of Roundtree. There's the excitement of Apprendagas coming in. Uh, Leamy has now completed his move from Leinster ahead of next season and he was very highly rated as a contact skills coach with Leinster over the last couple of seasons while he was commuting up and down from Tipperary to Dublin. So at least the coaching team is in place some of the signings have already been made but you look as well on the rebuild you've got players like Keith Earls and Conor Murray who have got probably a couple of top seasons left back and then we see Earls sign his new contract uh, just this week but to me on the face of it the rebuild is is quite large for this coaching team and probably not a huge amount of time to try and turn it around either No but I, I, we have seen elements that have changed I think and, and that's where I'd hold out a bit of hope um, uh, look there needs to be I, I've, I've asked for this for years I'd like to see a, a, pretty much a summit for how Munster should go about getting the most out of their clubs and their schools because we don't have um, the same system as they have in Leinster and I, look I, we shouldn't even pretend that we have anything similar to it but we do have a lot of rugby schools we do have a lot of rugby clubs I don't know that they're all fully aligned. I don't believe that they are. And I think that that is something that at least if Munster were fighting um, in one direction, they'd be a far stronger, more, more coherent uh, organisation. I think that's something that's essential. Um, I do think under Ian Costello that there's an awful lot of change happening at linking in with, with clubs at underage level and schools at underage level. And like that's a piece of work and that's going to take a few years Um there were a lot of players were were brought into the system this year. I think a lot of that was to do with COVID and to do with maybe some of the paucity of funds that were available. But um, I also think it's a, you know, it was a, it was too not too late, but it was late happening. And I think it would have been interesting to see a lot of younger players being brought in four or five, three, four or five years ago. Um, and so that has started to change. And it's about trying to build um, that sense of one with the community again with the supporters again and I do think we got to that with Toulouse and um, I'm not saying that we can just gloss over the last two weekends but those players know what it's like to have 50,000 people shouting them on and it'll be really interesting to see if they can get to that idea again and start building on it so it requires a huge amount of support and I would say all the time that we bring new coaches in, we need to put an awful lot more support around them that, you know, that they're not left kind of hanging out to dry for an awful lot of it. And we have brought a couple of Munster coaches back in. Um, I hope there's a couple more to come in. I think there's still one or two places that need to be filled um, and Munster need to be stacked as, as, um, as well as they possibly can at that stage. 
Yeah, because I was reading Prendergast's uh, piece that he did, I think it was with the Sunday edition of the Daily Mail a couple of Sundays ago, and he was talking about the fact that, look, he knows the Munster DNA, he knows the way that things work at the province, but at the same time, he feels that what he's learned in France over the last few years, they implement something slightly different. And the idea was that he wanted to try and make Munster a bit dynamic, the fact that they could maybe play different styles of rugby, and he's hoping his experience from abroad. Like, if he's going to be one of the main uh, brain injections into this system, you're probably hoping that what he's learned in Paris in recent years is going to be a huge help as well. Yeah, well, I mean, what a breath of fresh air that is. And I, I think we have listened for the last while that, like, Munster have tried to play a style of rugby that suits South Africa. And actually, if you look at all the players that have been brought in, a lot of South African players have been brought in to try and play that. So where is the overall strategy of Munster in terms of what do they want of their players? Is it if you have a South African coach that you bring in South African players because that's what they know? Or do you try and upskill all the players that you have at your disposal and try and get them to play a game that suits them more? And I mean, that the latter is obviously what I would think. And um, uh, and I do think you need to have an element. It isn't that all your coaches should be from Munster. That's not the point. That was never the point. It isn't that all your players should be from Munster. That isn't the point. Um, I do think you're always looking for two or three world-class players to try and play and build out and help um, uh, encourage the players, to the, the local players to hire things. And, and I'd always say about the quality of the player that you bring in, if you bring in great players... You also want them to have a great influence on the players around them, both on and off the field. So, I mean, there, there are some of the elements with it. But, like, if we look at, at how Munster have been for the last while, it's the strategy has come from the head coach. And for me, Munster has to be more than just a head coach because coaches change. And we've seen that they could change on a whim almost. So, if that is the case, we need to make certain that there is a proper strategy for the signing of players, who who is responsible for it, who is the authority for it. Um, how does that work with the IRFU? I mean, I, I think at times the lack of transparency that works there works against Munster in a PR fashion. So I think there's an awful lot that has to change. Just before we talk about Ulster and Leinster, on Munster, did the season almost feel a little bit doomed once the Bath announcement happened? Because clearly Munster and the RFU have made the decision that you know Van Graham was going to be kept for longer. He changes his mind. He uses that clause within the contract to sign for Bath. Clearly, at that point, his coaching team were going to be swept away at the same time. So as you say, and I think the phrase you used earlier was lame duck, it did feel a little bit like a lame duck season when you knew that Johan van Graan was already getting ready for a new job this summer. Well, I, it doesn't always have to, but for me, it did on the fact that he had agreed to to sign on for two more years and then, um, you know, invoked a clause that he would leave in six months, which I still think is a stupid clause to have in. I think it puts the, the club under huge pressure. Um uh, it, it didn't have to be. It didn't have to be um, that, but it required an, an awful lot of things to kind of go right. And I don't know whether we ran out of fizz. I mean, the idea that Munster are only interested in the uh, European Cup—that's a fallacy, obviously. Mm. But on losing it and in the fashion which it did, I think it took a huge amount of the emotional capacity out of the players. So. Um, I don't know if that was the case, but I do know that if it was within business, if you'd committed to um, two more years and then decided you were leaving, I actually, for the vast majority of businesses, they would let that guy go mm. and you would try and rebuild immediately from that point. Well, particularly when Graham Rowntree was already in the system, who they eventually would identify as uh, the next head coach. Rugby here on Off the Ball is brought to you by Vodafone, proudly supporting the Irish rugby team. We all belong in the team of us. Ulster, uh, Woody, when it came to the game on Friday, like we can dwell on Munster and their disappointment for the season, but Ulster were really good. And we've reached the point now where I think there's an argument about how many Ulster players go on tour for New Zealand with Ireland this year. Hume has been incredibly impressive. And in a general sense, uh, in that game at Kingspan on Friday night, Ulster denied Munster go forward ball. They were intense. They were getting to the rooks. And it was a really, really good performance overall by the Ulstermen. A very good performance. A lot of young players, a lot of guys, 21, 22, 23, um, who, and some of the older guys that were there as well. But but they played as a team. And like I think Ulster have been very good and average at different times during the year. And I thought they played pretty well but they can play better than that and but they played far well enough to beat Munster and their attitude would have been the marked uh, difference between the two teams 
It's a tricky semi-final if they go to Cape Town now to play the Stormers this coming Saturday. So that's going to be a test in itself, even with the logistics, whatever about the game. And the South African teams have finished the season reasonably well. They kind of found their feet in the last third of the season particularly. Do you think Ulster are going to get through and get to this final at the weekend? I think that's a very tough one. I think it's a really tough um, game for them. At least they're playing at sea level. That makes a huge difference. Um, There's a fair amount of travel for it. Um, I'm still not totally convinced about South African teams in the URC. I'm, I know that they're bringing up the level and I know that there are different things that are happening. But if you look at every other squads that are happening around, they're reducing the number of squads. We seem to be increasing the number of players in the squads to be able to deal with the amount of matches that have been played. But um, I think it's a very big match for them. Uh, I wonder whether they're, the emotion of having um, beaten Munster and the manner in which they celebrated at the end, whether that's enough to carry them over another one. Because, But they look like they're also on a journey. I, I, I just... I think James Hume, I've just been impressed by him all season. All season, his his step, his aggression on tackle, there's a, he's, he's a bit balshy. I kind of like that too. And there's a bit of a strut to them. Um, whether that strut, strut is enough down in South Africa, I'm not sure. Oh, it's Anthony O'Cullen in Marseille after the game against La Rochelle and he was 100% convinced and you can say this is not what he's going to say but that they would be back for the URC and they'd be very much on it when they played that game against Glasgow. Um, hugely impressive performance I mean it was as one side as it gets you run 70 points up on a team uh, just a week after playing in a European final and I appreciate Leinster changed around the pack a little bit for the game too but like the fact they've got home advantage against the Bulls this weekend there's something almost very inevitable about Leinster once they get into the knockout stage of the URC look over their record over the last four years has been remarkable Well it has been but also their strength and depth means that when players are missing, it doesn't seem to affect them too much. The only time they've struggled really is in the front row at different times against some of the really big teams. And uh, they'll have a little bit of an issue on that on, on the weekend. But um, the manner in which they went about it just shows you that um, the level of consistency amongst players that come in and come out of the squad is incredible. And look, I think they play at a consistently very high level. I I still believe La Rochelle did a cracking number on them, but I actually thought Leinster didn't quite get their head into that game for whatever reason. They just weren't. They were a little bit off. Their passes were a little bit behind. They just didn't quite get to the beat of the game at all, and they were harried and hassled all the time. Um, fast forward to the weekend we've just seen, and they were totally in control of every single facet of the game. And it was a facile victory for them. Um, it won't be as easy um, with this game coming up, but I would still absolutely expect Leinster to win. Yeah, frontline players are going to come back in, like Robbie Henshaw and like Johnny Sexton, probably for this weekend. Um, Jordan Larmer, though, is the interesting one, Keith, to finish up on. He's having a very strong finish of the season with the way he played against Munster then he had to have the disappointment of missing out in Europe because other players were ahead of him he came back in played remarkably well scored a couple of tries again against Glasgow he's probably going to be pushing just purely on form to get into their team for this semi-final and for a final potentially if they beat the Bulls well I think so if not into the team onto the bench um, because I do think he offers something more like it's funny as a runner I think he's truly magnificent at full back and I think that's the best place for him under the high ball not as much And so for him, it's trying to balance out his own skills and work on on the things that he's not at his absolute best at. Because as a broken field runner with a bit of space, um, being able to see the field in front of him, he he does untold damage. Mm. He has remarkable feet. He can turn on a sixpence. He actually looks as if he's got faster on a straight line pace. Um, so on, on the work back through his injury so he's look you always want to pick foreign players but um, there aren't too many guys in Leinster who you wouldn't consider foreign players yeah Leinster against the Bulls is Friday evening at the RDS and then Cape Town on Saturday where Ulster will be looking to qualify against the Stormers Woody good to chat to you thanks a million brilliant cheers Will we'll take a short break we'll be back talking hurling with Tommy Walsh